Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, the 28th of September. Wow, it's already in the end of the month, practically, 2018. Let's get started with a lot to talk about today. Um, let's start over here in the Western Pacific. This is Typhoon Trammy, or Trami, and this is going to be a big problem here for Japan. A fast mover, uh, going to hit a lot of land masses through here with a lot of impacts. This will be a major news item over the next several days, no doubt about it. So the folks in Japan, you're really going to get clocked with this system uh, over the next few days. Uh, again, the category 3 and 2 it shows there, that's really not going to matter. This is just going to be a big carpet bombing type walloping mess. Uh, a lot like Florence, but over a huge area. Um, literally tens of millions of people are going to are going to be impacted by that typhoon. Then we have another tropical storm, number 30, uh, out there in the West Pacific that we will need to watch over the next several days. See where that ends up, and you know, headed off towards the northwest. Eventually, also probably towards Japan, strengthening as it does so. Now, in the western hemisphere, tropical storm Kirk. Um, and, you know, we ought to just look at these on the National Hurricane. Nothing against this, but we'll look at it from the Hurricane Center site. So we'll just do the mouse over right now. There's Kirk, and here's a new invest area, 96E, and then here is Rosa, and Rosa is going to be a problem for California, Nevada, Arizona, maybe New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, um, a lot of rain coming. And what's not on the map is a system here in the Mediterranean Sea that what people call a Medicaine, Mediterranean Sea hurricane. It's a cyclone, a storm, counterclockwise over the Mediterranean Sea that's going to impact Greece. And it's very similar to what we see in the oceans uh, and this one's in a landlocked sea though the mediterranean sea very similar to a tropical cyclone that we would observe elsewhere i just thought i'd bring that up that it's there i just it's not being tracked officially uh by any of the agencies so to speak so there's no tracking to show you but i did want to at least mention it all right in the atlantic kirk moved through in terms of its center of circulation the windward islands but the impacts are still being felt down here, and I'm going to show you some video in just a moment that was more or less sent to me, tagged you know, on Twitter, if you will, and it'll show you again the power of water down there. What's going to happen with Kirk? Eventually it'll die out and fade away, and then we just have to see whether or not its energy survives and gets up into this area and tries to develop into something later on. You never know. That could happen. This is the satellite shot here, the broad view from Tropical Tidbits, and you see Leslie over here, and eventually this will continue to sink south and west towards warmer water. It'll look a lot more warm core in nature, and it'll start you know, adding on ace points, so forth and so on, and be a true hurricane, I do believe. Here's Kirk, and you can see the very strong upper-level winds just tearing the convection apart. But there's still a lot of low-level moisture down here, and it's trying to stay alive in the face of this strong upper-level flow. Uh, still a lot of rainfall off and on in the Windward Islands. And you know what? Let me go and open a new tab here. Go back to Tropical Tidbits. We'll grab the satellite imagery. And let's at least zoom in here on the high res. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Uh, visible satellite here. Let's just let it load. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know where that came from. Even on my broadband, uh, it's still a lot to load here. There we go. So let's make a GIF animation out of it, shall we? That just makes it easier to deal with. Hey, we're recording this live to tape, as they say. So bear with me. I think this is important, so I wanted to show you. All righty. So there's Barbados, and still, you know, look at that. There's a tower that goes up right there, a thunderstorm. And you guys down here in the windwards, this moisture is going to hang around for a bit. Even up here all the way through Guadalupe and up towards Antigua, uh, some of this moisture rotating around this large 
not gyre. I mean, it's still a closed circulation. I mean, look right there. There's an arced band of convection. I mean, it is clawing its way from death. It's trying to survive uh, this very hostile shearing environment. Luckily, all of this convective activity is the rainfall is falling over the ocean. Uh, but this cell right here, you know, we need to watch this very closely uh, as this moves off. Uh, it's hard to see what the motion of it is, especially in the face of all this shear. Bottom line, you guys down here in the windwards and parts of the leewards, you're not out of the woods yet. So be careful out there. Uh, please don't get swept away in any of these floodwaters. I've heard from so many of you on social media, and I want you around, all right? So be careful out there. This is moving away, but it's not done yet. You still have all that energy uh, to go through to the east of the circulation center. All right, so let's go back here to uh, just real quick what Leslie, you know, 100% chance, yep, it's going to develop back into something, and then I think eventually a tropical storm and eventually a hurricane. This is the formation area, and it'll kind of hang out down here. And it doesn't look like it's going to have a chance to come back to the west. You never say never, but I just, I'm not seeing it just yet, put it that way, uh, to where it would impact the United States or even Bermuda. Now, in the Pacific here, let's look at Rose's track. And they, I guess the reason it doesn't show beyond Tuesday is that it should just be dissipated. The overall energy from the system uh, once we get into early next week. But it does look like a threat up here to areas such as Mexicali and Yuma, uh, probably over to Phoenix, maybe Tucson. And a lot of this moisture will get whisked ahead of the system. And big flood threat coming up, Southern California, Northwest Mexico, obviously. And there'll be a high surf issue up through here as well as the swells from this system come up and create some dangerous surf. Uh, so a lot of impacts from this, and you know the flooding could be severe in some cases. Now, I was planning on going out there, and I'm going to show you why I've decided to wait in just a moment before you'd be like, oh, man, yeah, I'm still, you'll see. Trust me. Uh, let's look back at the satellite picture there real quick. You can tell this huge piece of upper-level energy here. Uh, I'm going to carve out this trough and erode this ridge away and then allow Rosa to turn up into the southwest United States and then this energy coming in will create forcing of its own squeezing out a lot of that moisture across this region so we're going to be looking at several inches of rain especially in upslope areas okay remember that from Hawaii with Lane and other systems where you get that orographic lift and you know you've got these mountains in here and any of that upslope flow that comes out of the lower elevations where the deserts are you're going to wring out a lot more moisture in a short amount of time all right so areas like Payson um, uh, where else uh, Prescott uh, I'm trying to remember all my geography in Arizona higher elevation areas along streams creeks rivers arroyos washes whatever you need to be very mindful burn scar areas even several years old mud flows debris flows etc this could be a big problem so pay, pay attention to local watches and warnings and be prepared all right this could be a pretty high impact event in terms of flooding uh, across a good deal of this region and I'll touch upon that more starting tomorrow as the impacts become clearer now why am I not going to get on a plane and fly out? I've been really jonesing to get out here to this area. I'm fascinated by the interaction of tropical cyclones with the desert southwest. Well, you got to temper your excitement, so to speak, and your passion sometimes with other things. And I need to still round up equipment. I got to get my camera from Rodanthe. I still have a camera up here near Fayetteville. It's close enough. And I got to charge everything up. I got to make sure everything's working. And there's this. And I will admit, I don't know what the next name on the list is in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, but this is going to develop. And it's probably going to come around and do a very similar thing. 
about 10 days out. Now that's a risk. And, and in other words, that there's your answer. I'm going to be waiting for this. I'm going to wait to see when this develops, what happens. And I'll show you that on the GFS in just a moment. So I'm not going to go out for Rosa, but I am going to wait and see what this does because it may have more moisture to work with. It may come in at a, a different angle. I don't know. I just I have a feeling that waiting for number two will be the better play because then I can ship some equipment to a couple of contacts that I have uh, in Arizona and I can ship that FedEx ground and then I don't have to airline everything. I can take more equipment. I mean, I might be able to set up six camera systems and several of my GoPro units all around wherever this next one were to impact, right? So sometimes you have to be patient and wait for the prudent thing to do. And in this case, I'll be patient and I'll wait for the second one, whatever's after Rosa. And I'll go look after I'm done with this update and see. All right, so let's take a look real quick at the Atlantic Basin. This is the western part of the basin. Let's put this into motion. We'll speed this up. 850 millibars. There's the vorticity of Kirk. Finally, the energy starts to you know just go away here in the Lesser Antilles as the energy from Kirk here just moves along. You can see kind of this bending of the wind barbs, and this just kind of goes away over the next five days. Hey, what's that? That is Leslie. And look, it gets pretty far south down here and kind of mills around. Definitely looking more tropical, so that'll start piling up the ace points. Um, it will produce some swells, though, once it's sitting there. And those will radiate out and affect Bermuda, which is right there, in a few days. So be on the lookout for that. It's not impossible that it comes back far enough and it gets trapped under the ridge and heads back to the west. But I just that's that's a real stretch to think that that could actually happen. And we'll watch and see. And then you notice right at the end there, let's just take the, this is five days out. Okay, there's day five. Let's just advance it. There is Leslie and its huge wind field. And that's really going to kick up the surf. But then look at this. Mm -hmm. That's the makings of what could be an October event that takes shape. And we'll just have to wait and see. And when I start to see that, that gyre, and you see the counterclockwise turning of everything right down here, right off of Central America. That's where Nate got its start, roughly. And many, a powerful hurricane in October, that same general area. So that's day five. We'll see what happens beyond that. All right, now in the Pacific, let's go here to day one. And uh, we'll put this into motion, speed it up a little bit. All right, so there's Rosa. There is the next system. Uh, here's Arizona right here. Try to outline it for you. It's a pretty bad drawing. There's Nevada, all right, and California up here. Okay, so there comes Rosa Monday into Tuesday. Um, pretty high latitude up here, getting close to Southern California. The energy gets absorbed as part of this big trough I'm drawing all over the place. You see all that energy up there? Definitely a rainy period. And then, and this is 10 days of animation, this next system comes up and it's waiting to do something yep and so you know right there by day 10 I think that's where I stopped it uh, is that 240 hours it sure is that's a long way out but the pattern I mean look you know high pressure over here not much sitting over the Great Basin the door is open for tropical cyclones to come into Northwest Mexico and the desert southwest. So I'm going to put my money on uh, waiting, if you will. So there's Rosa. It comes in, and then I'll see what this system does. I mean, it might come in much farther to the east, and it could be a, you know, El Paso, Albuquerque issue. You just never know. Uh, so I'm going to wait and see what happens with that. I think that's the prudent way to go. All right. And of course, I'll be much more prepared. So uh, here are all of my. Uh, ats, you know, where people at you. And I just wanted to show you some of these. Uh, Deshaun sent me this earlier. This is from Barbados. Flash flooding. You know, I mean, geez, yikes. That's down in Barbados, right? I think so. Um, that's not good. Yeah, I think that's Barbados. Isn't that what they said? I'm pretty sure it's Barbados. Um, 
this is a set of pictures sent in from the St. Lucia, was that St. Lucia News? St. Lucia News Now. You know, these are down in the Windward Islands. Just a tropical storm. You're going to hear this from me for the rest of my career that, you know, we'll worry about the wind when when we have an Irma and a 180 mile an hour hurricane. You can really worry about the wind. Uh, but even that, as bad as it was, the wind from Irma and Maria, it was the flooding. I mean, more people were probably killed from Maria's flooding and the aftermath and all that disaster than the wind itself. The wind, it, it won't kill you. It's what's in the wind. But boy, too much water, even a couple of inches of rain over a short amount of time, and you get some of those images that I just showed you from the Windward Islands, Barbados, St. Lucia, elsewhere. Uh, it's bad. I and mean, you got the elevation down there, those mountains, and you get a lot of problems. So there you go. So I'll be around all weekend. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to head up to the Outer Banks and grab my camera at some point from Rodanthe and get everything back in the office, get everything running, make sure it's all good, and then we will see what happens after Rosa. It's a gamble. I really want to go to the desert southwest for one of these things, but if I wait for the second one, it could be a lot better in terms of my coverage. I could have more units, etc., and I'll be a lot better prepared since I'll have about a week to get ready instead of, i got to get on a plane on Sunday. Uh, I just It's not quite time yet. So I will watch Rosa from afar and give you the best information I can. I know we got a lot of people that follow what I do in Arizona and Southern California and elsewhere. So I'll be on top of it and tell you what I can tell you. All right? Have a great rest of your Friday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you throughout the weekend.